Hey, good morning, guys, and thanks for checking out your latest long-range forecast update. Michael Clark here with Pam Weather and the Weather Portal. We're going to dive right into today's update and get right into what we're looking at here over the course of the next couple of weeks. Hope you all had a, a great weekend out there. We'll take a look here at radar this morning, and we've looked at over the, the past 24 hours a significant rain event here <clears throat> across portions of northern Illinois. A uh, few counties up there in northwestern Illinois, uh, have exceeded 10 inches of rainfall here in the last 24 hours. Another one of these uh, just incredibly heavy, significant rainfall events in a short period of time uh, for another section of the Corn Belt. You know, we've had that happen now. Uh, if you guys can recall, we've had it happen uh, here. We've had it happen down here, uh, over here, you know, up in here. I mean, we've had multiple events where we've had some, some very, very intense rainfall events here that have resulted in flooding. This is radar as of this morning. Thunderstorms still going on southeast Iowa, north central Illinois, and uh, some light showers here across the uh, Illinois, Indiana, into Missouri area here as well, going through Michigan. All right, here's a look at precip, estimated precip totals here over the course of the last 72 hours. And again, uh, I do have, I actually have higher resolution data that indicates there was around 13 inches of rain that fell here across far northern Illinois. Uh, this is a, a, a table here that shows only one inch or more rain. And you can see where just the very heavy rain really kind of fell here uh, over the course of the last 72 hours as it pertains to the Corn Belt. A lot of crop right in here. A lot, lot of crop in here. Uh, a lot of rainfall right in through here as well. The areas, uh, there were some areas here that got more rainfall than projected over the weekend. But there were also areas that needed the rain that didn't get it. And that, that, you know, that's important here as we kind of look at this, this, this overall setup in general. Now, here's just the last 24 hours. And again, you can see kind of the focus there across northern Illinois. Now, I do want to bring your attention to this. This is the percent of normal rainfall the last 30 days. Okay. And then this is departure from normal the last seven days. Uh, a lot of locations, you can add probably it's, it's gotten a little bit wetter into here, but a lot of locations, that, you know, really needing the rainfall are, are still just kind of struggling here, guys, to get significant widespread rain. And, and there's, a, there's a lot of crop in here. You know, this is kind of that western half of the Corn Belt. And this is where, too, it's, it's also gotten, you know, very, very warm. And something I think that's important to consider is, is that a lot of the pollination, a lot of the crop pollinated much later than normal. Uh, by weeks, several weeks. And so it's important to remember this year is just different. It's not just everything's happening at a normal pace and a normal time and with normal weather. Uh, we, we've came from very hot and dry spells in June. And then, you know, we, we got wet for a time, but nothing was quite pollinating. And then it, it dried out again as pollination started. Then it got warm. And we've had roller coaster rides of cool and wet and warm and dry. But unfortunately, at some critical stages in the, in the plant's life here across the majority of the ag belt, um, and that's going to matter. It, it, it's just going to matter. I've been doing this for a long time, and I, I, I just know that it's going to have an impact on the overall final yield number here, okay, and how the weather is impacting that in general. Um, so it's obviously been a warm week, uh, but I will tell you that I think if you draw a line here, Going forward, I think you're going to be in much better shape here, and we're going to continue to have problems here. And that's just the way I see this unfolding. I think we have good news for a lot of the soybean crop in the eastern belt coming up. I really do. Okay, Overnight model trends. I really am leaning heavily towards the European model after diving in on some of the upper level charts here. Uh, I really do think the GFS might be missing some rainfall potential here across the northern plains. I'll talk more about that in a second. You see the euro trended wetter here. The GFS tried to. Um, really, there's not a perfect solution for either one. All right, but regardless, uh, I'll tell you why here in just a moment. This is a look at precip the next 15 days in five day chunks. Again, what I think I want to point your attention to for the most part is really the stark differences in the eastern belts pattern in the forecast here. You're just seeing eastern U.S., eastern southeastern U.S. precip chances to where we're keeping this kind of this drier look here in the central plains, and that's where it's also going to stay warmer too. 
and see that here in the temperature data. All right, GEFS probably a little overdone. Um, EPS may have a, a decent handle here, but I think you're just staying quite a bit warmer than average in the western half of the Corn Belt and cooler than average to normal in the eastern half with rainfall chances. So I want to preface, uh, take these GFS precip maps with a grain of salt the next few days because I don't think they're right. And I think that the reason for that is, is I think the first missed rainfall opportunity that these models aren't hinting at is probably Thursday into Friday along the northwest flow and this 588 height line. We're going to be looking at scattered shower chances in here from northwest to southeast that you're just not seeing on the charts. And then I think Friday into Saturday, we're looking at more of the same here. We've got a little bit of a short wave here across Minnesota into Illinois and possibly Indiana. Uh, I would not be shocked if there's some rain on the radar here that's just not being picked up on on the weather models. All right. And even beyond that point into the central plains, once again, Sunday night into Monday, we're going to give or take 12 hours here. But another uh, evident short wave along the 588 height line that I just don't think the model is seeing, the GFS in particular at the surface, it's seeing it in the upper level patterns. But when I look at the, at the precipitation uh, forecast, you'll find it here, here we go. Uh, I, I go to one of our, our super ensemble presets where we're factoring in uh, different weather models. This here is a heavy European and European ensemble lean. So I'm blending 60% of the Euro operational and 40% of the European ensemble to come up with a seven day map here. And what I, what I note here is what I like is I see some of this stuff in here because of kind of what we're seeing with this flow pattern, this northwest flow. Um, I don't think we're looking at damaging strong storm clusters because we're lacking a lot of instability, but I definitely think the potential for rainfall that's unforeseen here in the weather models uh, will be a risk. Now, areas that will not get the rain are the areas that need the rain. And I do, I do believe that this continues to be a problem of the western half of the belt here being hot and being dry. Okay, so going forward, this is a look at the at the pattern in general, so one to five. And again, that's a northwest flow. We, we, we cannot sleep on rainfall chances there. It's still a northwest flow in the six to ten. Trough sets up in the east. That's the MJO going to work. We may want to start to watch for the Atlantic Ocean to get more active here later into the month. The 10 to 15, we, we still kind of see the same, but again, we see it cooler in the east with a trough and the potential for more precip east than west. You're still warm here, but no, we still have that northwest flow pattern. So over the course of the next 15 days, all right, I don't mind week one here. You're cooler in the east. Week two, you're cooler, right? We're keeping it warmer here. We're keeping it warmer in the west. This is week one. This is week two down here. Here's the precip from normal forecast. If anywhere in this map is wrong, it, it could possibly be right in through here where it may end up being a little bit wetter or at least normal precip. All right? I think it's wetter here where it's showing it. But again, this is a, a blend of all of our, 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 this is the American and European ensemble blend. But again, this, this region in here, you know, again, worried about the, the prolonged warmer and drier risks here continuing. I think there's some persistence into this pattern even into early September. All right. So just something to keep in mind. Here's my here's my <clears throat> my fifth grade drawing of the 16 to 30 day outlook this morning. This is just kind of what I'm seeing in the pattern. Um, I'm factoring in the PDO analogs. All right. I'm factoring in the MJO and uh, what we call the, uh, the the BSR, the Bering Sea up there in the North Pacific Ocean. Factoring all these three things uh, together, um, you know, this is the persistence in the pattern I see continuing here, you know, late month uh, as we as we wrap the month up and start looking into September. The cooler and the wetter risks are certainly there in the eastern belt, especially for beans. The warmer and the drier risks are going to continue with at least potential over the top. But I see a lot of persistence in this pattern going forward. If anything, if anything, you know, I've showed you these analogs 50,000 times. If anything, again, uh, the, the August into September transition, when looking at this, again, brings the cooler weather even further into the belt and the western belt, or I'm sorry, into the, the, the cold in the east starts to try and migrate west a little bit, and we stay wet. Uh, and then the west, the warmth here starts to retrograde to the west with the dryness as well. Okay, so September, 
for a, a, a big chunk, maybe 60% of the Corn Belt, the Eastern Belt, has the risk of get, turning cooler and wetter. And that warmth kind of focusing where it's drier and starting to retrograde a little bit. But September may feature a, a cooler temperature pattern, uh, something that we're going to continue to watch. These PDO analogs have done a fantastic job nailing this pattern. I want you to look at one thing before I wrap the video up. I mean, look at the dryness it had right in through here. You see that? Look at the warmth it had in through here for August, right? And look at and, and, and you know, look at this. I mean, that's a that's that's absolute nailing it right there. I mean, you know, I know that's uh, factors in a lot of July, uh, but the warmth too. You know, the pattern in general. These analogs have done a, a great job. So, leads me to believe we're going to see some persistence in it, with it starting to back off and uh, change a little bit late month into September, especially I think as the Atlantic heats up the tropical season as well. So uh, that's all I have today, guys. Thanks for logging on, checking out the video. If you have any questions, let us know. Have a great day.